All right, we're going to jump a little bit into trigonometry now. Trigonometry is basically the study of angles and measures and how they relate with one another. So let's first talk about an angle. Within an angle, we've got some specific parts. You've got your vertex with an initial side and a terminal side. If this initial side is at, if we call it zero degrees, we say that's in standard position. And then the angle rotates and finishes at another ray called the terminal side. If we measure in a counterclockwise direction, that's a positive angle measure. If we measure from standard position in a clockwise fashion, that's a negative angle measure. Now, some degree notation that we rarely ever use, but that's used oftentimes in, in nautical and military type uh, venues is something called degrees, minutes, and seconds. And in this case, one degree is equivalent to 60 minutes as notated by a minute being like a foot sign. And then one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. Seconds being the almost quotation looking mark. And what we're going to do is take and change some decimal degrees that we know about into this degrees, minutes, and seconds notation. So let's start here. We have 55.524 degrees, and this is in decimal degrees, and we're going to change this to degrees, minutes, seconds. Well, we know there are 55 full degrees in this decimal degree. We have to convert then 0.5 to four degrees into degrees, minutes, and seconds. And to do this, we use, if you will, dimensional analysis. We'll try to get rid of the degrees on the bottom and make its equivalent on the top by changing its units to minutes. So one degree is 60 minutes. So now we can find out the minutes part of this measure by multiplying the two together. So if we take 0.54, multiply that by 60, we get 31.44 minutes in this measure. So right now we have 55 degrees, 31 minutes, but we have 0.44 of a minute left. So we're going to convert 0.44 minutes to seconds. And again, use a dimensional analysis. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. Once again, multiply again, 0.44 times 60, and that gets us 26.4 seconds. We won't use the decimal part of seconds, so we'll just say 26 seconds to finish that off. So 55.524 decimal degrees is equivalent to 55 degrees, 31 minutes, and 26 seconds. We can go the other way and convert from degrees, minutes, and seconds to decimal degrees. We know this is going to be 22 plus we have 15 minutes and if we use dimensional analysis we can change that to degrees by saying 60 minutes is one degree. So that'll get us our degree measure. And that's going to be 22 plus, we you know 15 over 60 is 0.25 plus, and then I take 28 seconds and convert, we know 60 seconds is one minute and 60 minutes is one degree because we're trying to get back to degrees. So if I divide 28 
by 3600, I get uh, 22 plus 0.25 plus 0 0.007 repeating. And we now end up with 22.257 repeating degrees. And that's how we work these both ways. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about a measurement of an angle that is not in degrees, what we're used to. We're going to talk about something called radian measure. And radians are basically an angle's measurement relative to the distance or arc length around a circle. We know that if we go all the way around the cir circle, it's called a circumference, and that's equivalent to 2 pi r. If we were to have a circle whose radius were just 1, otherwise known as a unit circle, then the circumference would be 2 pi r, 2 pi times 1, which is 2 pi. Thus, one revolution around a circle is equivalent to what we call 2 pi radians. So if I talk a little bit intuitively about angles and their measurements relative to degrees and radians, we could say that if we go all the way around a circle, we have 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. We just talked about that. If we go halfway around a circle, we know we have 180 degrees, and halfway around 2 pi is pi. If we go half of that, we know that we've gone 90 degrees, and half of pi is pi over 2. So notice these are all equivalents. If we know that 90 degrees is pi over 2, then we add 90 degrees to 180, we get 270 degrees. But if we add pi over 2 to pi, that's 3 pi over 2. And we can continue to intuitively do this all the way around the circle. Notice if I were to take and say, I only want to go one-sixth of the way around a circle, one-sixth of 180 is 30. But a sixth of pi is pi over 6. If I wanted to go a quarter of the way around this half circle, then a quarter of 180 is 45 degrees, and a quarter of pi is pi over 4. Likewise, if I only want to go a sixth of this 180 degrees, I'm sorry, a third of that 180 degrees, that would be 60 degrees, put this up here, and then likewise, I go a sixth of pi, or in this case, a third of pi, since that's what I'm doing, sorry. And then we have an intuitive conversion of degrees to radians, and we could do this throughout the entire circle. Basically, intuitively, we can split this circle up into sixths. So here is one sixth, two sixths is the same as pi over three. Three sixths is pi over two. This is four sixths, or two pi over three. Five sixths, six sixths, which is just pi. Seven sixths. 8 6 9 6 which is 3 pi over 2 10 6 11 6 and then 12 6 we're back to 2 pi and if we go in terms of fourths there's a fourth 2 fourths is a half 3 fourths is 3 fourths 4 fourths is 1 5 fourths 6 fourths is 3 pi over 2 7 fourths 
is seven fourths. And this is an intuitive way to look at our angle in degrees to radian conversions. Now, to give a little more mathematical approach to this, there's a proportion we can use. In other words, the radian value over pi is equivalent to the degree value over 180. This enables us to basically convert any kind of degree to radian that we want. So if we want to convert 70 degrees to a radian value, I know that the degrees over 180 is equal to my radian values over pi. So my radian then is equal to 7 pi over 18. Likewise, if I take my r over pi for 248, I take and put 248 over 180, and then I can reduce that. So 248 divided by 180 is 62 over 45 pi. And this is the radian value. Remember, pi isn't a radian. Pi is equal to 3.14 radians. 2 pi is equal to 6.28 radians. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And then, if we want to convert from radians back to degree values, we take our radian value of five pi over eight, divide that by pi, set that equal to our degree measure over 180. Notice the pi is reduced, so basically, I'm taking 180 times five eighths to get my degree measurement. If I take 5 eighths and multiply that by 180, I get 112.5 degrees. Likewise, if I take 11 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4, where pi is equal to the degrees over 180, that's like multiplying 180 by 11 fourths. That's going to equal a total of 495 degrees. Which makes sense because it's more than 2 pi. 11 pi over 4 is equal to 2 and 3 fourths pi. 2 pi we know is 360. So this is more than 360 degrees. Makes total sense. So there's an intuitive and a proportional or more mathematical way to go from degrees to radians and backwards and forwards, as well as a little bit about degrees, minutes, and seconds. Do my math lab, fill out the survey, and we'll see you tomorrow.